Good afternoon. Uh, the next bit. Now that we've seen what the momentum is and what Newton's second law, the rewritten original form of Newton's second law is, we can look at collision and impulse. What exactly is a collision? Well, I mean, what is the impulse besides something in Star Trek? A collision happens when an object's momentum changes drastically in a very, very short amount of time. Picture two things that try to occupy the same place at the same time and you will most likely have a collision. Classic example of a baseball bat hitting a baseball is a collision. Classic example of a golf swing, the driver hitting the ball and propelling it. Classic example of someone falling on the ground, that's a collision. Newton's second law says that the rate of change of momentum of an object is directly proportional to the force, the net force that's applied to it, but we never say what type of force it needs to be. We just say a force or a net force. We don't really care. It can be most anything. In a collision, the net force is very, very big. To impart a change in momentum in a very, very short amount of time, we need it to have a very, very large force. So the calculations, the answers we'll take, that we'll make, will will yield uh, very, very big numbers, and that's fine. A concept before we do that is the uh, impulse. The impulse is really just the change in linear momentum. It's usually talked about when we have a collision, when we have a short span of time, but that's really just it, right? Mm -hmm. The impulse, for whatever reason, its symbol is J, capital J, but I almost never use it. I just write it because. But really it's the change in momentum and that's what's interesting, that's what's important. So it's the final momentum minus the initial momentum of the object before and after the collision with something else. Something that is hit undergoes a change in momentum, undergoes, has an impulse. When I hit the marker, and it flies off, I change its momentum. It was going down perfectly and I hit it at an angle and it flew out. Out of these two, we can also find what the average force, for example, I imparted on the marker. When a force is applied on an object during a collision, it usually is a very, very sharp thing and then it gradually goes down. So that's the force with respect to time. But finding what the maximum force is or what the force is during that span of time, that's Remember, this is very, very short. That's a bit difficult. So using some principles of calculus, of integral calculus, if we take the whole duration where the force was applied, we can find what the average force was, this here in red. The average force felt during this collision by the object, by my marker, for example, is the change in momentum, the total change in momentum divided by the time, the total time of the collision. We can't really find what the blue curve is, but we can certainly find what the red thing is. It's just the area of this rectangle. This is a vector equation, so obviously we can split it in x and y components and do all of the shenanigans we usually do with vectors. We need to discuss one more thing, then we'll be able to talk about collision and what's happening before and after collision when we have multiple objects in motion. So I'll see you then.